Hi guys. Well, it is a smoky, sticky, yuck day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is somehow we have made it halfway through. Do you believe it, guys? We have made it halfway through the year 2023, bringing us to Friday. June 30th. It is Friday evening, June 30th, 2023, and uh, I guess I'm waiting for the one or two people uh, to come to my vacation rental business uh, who did not cancel on me on the biggest weekend of the year with all of this uh, business-killing wildfire smoke. So as I wait for them to get here, we'll see if anybody drives up during the middle of, since it is Friday, this is the halfway through 2023 ecological meltdown roundup rant where I check in with, uh, with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at, uh, over at mongabay.com to see what is on Rhett's mind halfway through the year. And uh, earlier today, it was the camera battery that was dying. Now we'll see if my computer battery makes it. And, uh, <coughs> you know, I absolutely love it when, when Rhett asks a question in, in a video, just like he did last year, the, the opening salvo we ask a question but it's not a yes or no question it is a it, it is a no shit sherlock answer to the question and the question is why did the orangutan cl cross the toll road to indonesia's new capital city well as rhett will explain for anyone who does not know the answer to the question the orangutan and the cl clouded leopards and everything else were crossing the road to get away from all of the goddamn bulldozers, the chainsaws, the dynamite, uh, and, and all the rest of it. Uh, as um, Indonesia, you know, moving its capital from that hellhole uh, is that Jakarta, Indonesia, talking about the poster child for the collapse of global industrial civilization? So they're just moving the capital to leave all those little brown people to fend for themselves in the slums and all of the people with any money in Jakarta getting the hell out of Jakarta while they still can before the zombie apocalypse cranks up in earnest down there and uh, just this moving the, the whole city you will see a lot more of this uh, I had an interview with my buddy uh, Jeremy Jimenez this morning talking about this very thing about how these major shithole cities are going to have to be abandoned this story, this story here in Jakarta, Indonesia, is a classic example of what more and more and more of this century is going to look like, where the you know where the rich people uh, get the hell out of Dodge, uh, leaving the poor folks to fend for themselves in the zombie apocalypse, and and create all of this environmental carnage. Uh, trying to save their uh, rich asses. Uh, take this story as a snapshot of the rest of this century. And then listen to my interview with uh, Jeremy Jimenez, where he's talking about this very subject. And then it's the lead-off story uh, in Manga Bay. For anybody trying to understand what the collapse of society in a planet looks like, why did the orangutan cross the toll road to Indonesia's new capital city? No shit, Sherlock. The sighting of a Bornean orangutan crossing the site 
of an under construction toll road to Indonesia's new capital city has renewed questions about the government's claims about how green, how green the $32 billion project really is. It's not the first wildlife sighting in the construction area. There have already been five instances of clouded leopards seen in the area. Activists say these sightings indicate that the development of the new capital city and its supporting infrastructure, and we can get in the whole bright green lie angle here, is being carried out without proper planning and thus will threaten the region's ecosystems and wildlife. The toll road project has already cleared hundreds of acres of forest that serve as a now former buffer zone to a protected forest area that is a habitat for threatened species such as orangutans, sun bears, clouded leopards, proboscis monkeys, and Irrawaddy dolphins, every one of which you can kiss goodbye as uh, Jakarta, uh, Indonesia uh, becomes the first major city to be abandoned in the 21st century called Jeremy Jimenez a doomsday prophet. He acts like he's not a doomer. He's a doomsday prophet. He, he made this very prediction this morning. I open up Manga Bay. It's the first story. The first story. It's the title of, Jerry, of, of, of doomer adjacent Jeremy Jimenez's video. Okay? You don't even have to be a full doomer. You just have to be doomer adjacent. To understand what's going on on this planet uh, and, and, and how these rich folks are going, you know, they, they don't give a damn uh, about the poor folks in the slums and they sure as hell don't give a damn about orangutans and crowded and clouded leopards and Irrawaddy dolphins. Do you get it, folks? Anyway, I can stop this print right here. So, anyway, and there's two stories uh, in this week's uh, Rolodex of Catastrophe uh, that I'm a little unclear of. There's, there's two stories with these new studies coming out. So I guess this, uh, this first one... Uh, is, is looking just at the Amazon rainforest. There, there is some ridiculous notion out there that because Jair Bozo Nero got kicked out of office, that the Amazon rainforest is a new protected area. Uh, so we're going to look at the whole Amazon, Brazil, and, and the other countries. So what is the what is the scorecard for 2022 for the Amazon rainforest in particular? The Amazon saw record deforestation last year. Wow, an estimated two million hectares, otherwise known as five million acres, of Amazon rainforest were cleared in 22 a 21% increase from 2021 in one year. 21%. 5 million acres of the Amazon rainforest hitting the dirt last year. This is nowhere being discussed anywhere in the mainstream media, and this will be my least viewed uh, video that I do all week. It was the worst year for deforestation since 2004, according to Amazon Conservation's monitoring of the Amazon project. 
which analyze satellite readings from Global Forest Watch. The deforestation was caused by cattle ranching, agriculture, mining, and new road projects in Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela. Okay, so then they look, uh, I guess, at a, at a, uh, this is another study from the University of Maryland looking at just the increase in the obliteration of primary, meaning, you know, virgin old growth, tropical rainforest globally, which obviously the uh, Amazon uh, leading the, the cause here. So according to this one, new data show a 10% increase in primary tropical forest loss in 2022. So that last study was saying 21% in the Amazon rainforest. So looking uh, at the wider picture, globally, the tropics lost over 4 million hectares or over 10 million acres of primary forest in 2022. 10% more than in 2021, so right about half of the total uh, was in the Amazon rainforest and the rest of the planet, uh, you know, mainly talking the Congo rainforest in uh, Africa and the various uh, Southeast Asian rainforests, so you can bind the three of them and you can kiss goodbye 10 million acres of primary forest last year, which was 10% more than in 2021. These losses occurred despite, despite the pledges of 145 countries at COP26 in 2021 to increase efforts to reduce deforestation and halt it by 2030. Uh, the new data from the University of Maryland puts the world far off track for meeting the goal of zero deforestation. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, there you go. The world is far off track from meeting the goal of zero deforestation. There is one way to achieve zero, zero deforestation on this planet, and one way only, that is to make this planet a human exclusion zone. It is not beavers cutting down the tropical rain forest. It is is humans. So let's zero in on Colombia's forest. What is in store for Colombia's forest? New modeling tries to predict. In an attempt to chart some outcomes for the future of Colombia's forest, the food Agriculture, Biodiversity, Land Use, and Energy Consortium looked at three different directions the country could take with its current policies. The three directions being the frying pan, the fire, and the nuclear bomb. Those are the three possible scenarios for Colombia's rainforest, you know, which is, what is that, the Northwest Amazon rainforest. Its choices are uh, frying pan, fire, or nuclear bomb. Those are the three that they are charting. And then we had one on the Congo 
rainforest in uh, in Africa. Big potential and immense challenges for great ape conservation in the Congo Basin. <clears throat> great apes are on track to lose 94% of their range to climate change by 2050 if humans do nothing to address the problem, according to research. And I'm just going to break in here. It, it, it makes no difference if climate change had nothing whatsoever to do with the picture. Okay, Let, let's get this straight. I remember two or three years ago when Manga Bay did this excellent series on, uh, on how screwed the Congo uh, basin was, and I don't even think they were looking at climate change, uh, just predicting easily years ago that by 2050... Uh, there would no longer be a Congo rainforest. So I'm not necessarily arguing that climate change by itself by 2050 can destroy 94% of great apes, uh, of great ape habitat in the Congo uh, rainforest. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily arguing that, but it's going to be a non-starter because chainsaws and bulldozers are going to have done uh, already what climate change is just waiting in the wings to do, uh, you know, batting cleanup for whatever the the chainsaws and the bulldozers and the lumber companies and the oil palm people and all the rest of the... And, and don't forget the charcoal makers. And uh, in, anyway, do we understand that the great apes are screwed? The chimpanzee empire is coming to an end. In the Great Apes stronghold of the Congo Basin, national interest in natural resource exploitation. Can you say resource wars? A lack of security in the area. Hunting and the illegal wildlife trade all, all greatly already I'm putting in the word already, impact populations of bonobos and mountain gorillas with no help from climate change. Natural resource exploitation, lack of security, hunting, otherwise known as poaching, the illegal wildlife trade, and just, uh, I don't know why they left out uh, agriculture, it is habitat uh, destruction. Uh, anyway, you can kiss goodbye, uh, the chimpanzee empire, the bonobo empire, the gorilla empire, the orangutan empire, the American empire, and pretty soon the Chinese empire, uh, soon after the American empire comes crashing to the ground. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, obviously, I'm skipping over the hopium. Skipping over the hopium. Okay, let's, uh, this picture reminds me a whole lot of the pictures I saw earlier this week of uh, Mount Everest. This is uh, a place called Adams Peak in Sri Lanka. Annual Adams Peak pilgrimage leaves Sri Lankan biodiversity site littered. Sri Lanka's Adams Peak Wilderness Sanctuary, recording the island's highest biodiversity continues to face multiple threats due to a pilgrim due to a pilgrimage 
that draws a huge crowd of clueless morons. During the pilgrimage season, tons of non-biodegradable non polythene, which I th is that uh, styrofoam, and plastics are dumped and get washed down or carried by the wind. Adding a fresh problem, Buddhist devotees, Buddhist devotees are habitually offering a beautiful and rare endemic flower, a practice that causes concern among environmentalists who fear the endangered palm will soon reach the brink of extinction due to demand by Buddhist pilgrims. The Peak Wilderness Sanctuary is also facing other serious issues such as forest dieback, a direct result of the forest getting drier as climate change adversely affects the island's top amphibian hotspot. Let's see if we can get a photograph. Okay, this is a picture of what it looks like after a bunch of Buddhist pilgrims heading up this uh, into a this wilderness area in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is how Buddhist pilgrims are respecting this planet. You know, looking a whole lot like the photograph uh, from, uh, you know, going up uh, Mount Everest. Y y you know, look at this. Uh, these goddamn Buddhists, they don't give a shit about this planet. Anybody who thinks a goddamn Buddhist uh, gives a damn about this planet any more than a goddamn Christian, a goddamn Jew, a goddamn Muslim, okay? They don't care. They don't care. Y y you know, why humans, uh, why we need to make this planet a human exclusion zone. You know, I'm really getting sick of this shit, guys. I really am. Let's see. More hopium. Blah, blah, blah. As one... We're going to go to Brazil, you know, where they we have the Save the Planet... Uh, What's his name? Lulu. Uh, I guess Lulu is a big uh, champion. I, I'm assuming Lulu is a big champion of this unadulterated horseshit called carbon trading. As one Brazilian state takes up carbon trading, others may fall for the illusion. A recent agreement will allow the Brazilian state of Tocantins to sell carbon credits to Swiss oil trading company Mercuria. Proponents, which I, I, I wish I knew if Lulu was on board with this, and I'm quite sure that he is. Proponents see the deal as an opportunity for the state to obtain financial resources that will support the state's environmental policies. However, carbon offsets are, hot, are hotly debated, and many experts, you know, the ones with brains not falling for this greenwashing horseshit, say the carbon market does more harm than good for the environment and global greenhouse gas emissions. The deal is likely to have a ripple effect on surrounding Amazonian states, experts say, leading to future carbon offset deals and prolonging the global use of fossil 
fuels. Is there anybody who does not get it? Carbon offsets are a scam. They are just one more of the bright green lies. When cute is cruel, social media videos stoke Loris pet trade. This is just the, the latest sugar glider uh, reincarnation, uh, you know, where they're going after this little thing called a slow Loris. Oh, Jesus. At sea, as on land, activists oppose industrial farming in U.S. waters. Aquaculture produces more than half of the world's seafood, mostly in inland and coastal waters now. Industrial marine and coastal finfish aquaculture, such as salmon farming, accounts for just a fraction of that production and comes with a host of negative environmental impacts. And now, a set of agribusiness giants and other corporate interests are pushing to expand industrial fish aquaculture into U.S. federal waters, the open seas, where proponents argue that it will help feed a growing global demand for seafood and have less environmental impact. Yes, they want Congress to pass legislation establishing a federal aquaculture system. Though Congress has not yet acted, in 2020, Donald Trump uh, issued an executive order that gave the industry a boost and government agencies have begun the permitting process for several projects in which fish would be raised in open ocean pens miles out to sea. Environmental advocates, including the campaign group Don't Cage Our Oceans, are fighting against the proposed congressional bills calling for a reversal of the executive order and a stop to the proposed projects in U.S. federal waters. Ain't going to happen. Joe Biden uh, is going gonna, is gonna to sit there and with a befuddled look on his face and let this go right on through. The climate is already changing in Brazil's new agricultural frontier. Yes, collecting data from the last 40 years, researchers have observed increased temperatures and more severe droughts in the Matopiba region, a transition zone between the Cerrado and the eastern Amazon. The area is the largest area of contact, well, right now, between forest and savanna in the tropics and therefore in the last two decades it has become one of the main fronts for the expansion of grain uh, cultivation in Brazil. Uh, in the near future uh, environmental change can harm agribusiness itself. Okay, we have a new biodiversity goal that will uh, fail. To meet UN climate and biodiversity goals, 79% of plant cover must be saved on the planet. Yep. Uh, I'm just running through because uh, I know I'm talking to myself. Climate of fear persists among Nepal's eco-defenders uh, as threats rise. Uh, yep, in Nepal and everywhere else. Uh, 
Here is Bangladesh's new red list of plants. Shows country has already lost seven species. Seven species, my ass. Uh, the question is, is Jeff Bezos' $500 million yacht made with blood timber from Myanmar, otherwise known as teak? The answer to the question, unlike the, the usual answer to questions in, in Manga Bay, the answer to the yes or no question is Jeff Bezos' $500 million yacht made with blood timber from Myanmar? The answer to that question is yes. Okay, more hopium, more BS, don't have time for it. Uh, we are going to close. I'm going to send this one out to Book Hermit. So Book Hermit, if you are one of the 10 people on the planet still listening to this and you are still suffering some delusion that hydropower is a clean green power source, we're going to leave off in the Amazon rainforest. Dam building spree pushes Amazon Basin's aquatic life closer to extinction. A recent study looking at 343,000 kilometers, 343,000, how many miles is that? I don't know, 200,000 miles of waterways along 6,000 rivers across the Amazon Basin highlights the importance of free-flowing rivers to migratory species of fish and turtles as well as river dolphins. More than 20 species are threatened by the construction of hydroelectric dams on long-distance rivers considered to be key corridors for biodiversity. The study's researchers identified 434 dams that have either been built or are currently under construction across the whole of the Amazon Basin, and a further 463 proposed dams that are in various stages of planning. And of course, Lulu is a big defender of hydropower. Um... One of the proposed dams on the Tapajos River would it leave at least four pods of river dolphins isolated from one another, leaving them facing a similar fate to the river dolphins impacted by similar projects on the Madeira River and today threatened with extinction. Anyway... I'm going to wrap it up here because uh, I need to get ready for the one or two people straggling in, gasping in the smoke to enjoy a vacation in hell. Get out there and enjoy your own 4th of July vacation in hell while you still can. Bye, guys.